I'm going to bring Sarah Buttison back at this point now uh, to describe what was actually going on inside the courtroom. I think there are some moments after the sentence was read that you're going to want to hear about. First of all, after Jimmy DeMora learned of his sentence, there was a moment where he kind of tried to stand up even though it's clearly difficult for him. And at that point, the U.S. Marshal guarding him didn't quite know what was going on. And you saw her reach for her gun for a moment. And then Jimmy kind of looked at her and sat back down. But it was definitely a moment that was unexpected and a little bit dramatic. However, it was absolutely nothing compared to what happened when the courtroom was, when the court was dismissed by the judge. Jimmy got up and he turned to the nine family members he had there today. And he said, I'll see you guys later. Don't know when. And they all responded by saying, we love you, Jimmy. Love you, Jim. And his wife, Lori, began crying. And a few other family members appeared to be crying as well at that time. And then after that emotional moment, Jimmy took his walker and went by prosecutors. And he said, good story. And then he said, I hope you guys are happy. And then he left the courtroom as his family continued to stay there and cry and attempt to comfort each other during this, of course, trying time for them. Well, we're going to bring Ron back in now to fill yeah. you in on the situation. It, it had to be a fascinating moment uh, to actually be right there and again to bring our viewers into. Uh, how the seating uh, was arranged. Not everybody got a dance card for this because there was such a small courtroom uh, that news organizations were allowed to have one uh, member of, of their news organization in the court. And uh, News Channel 5 not only had investigative reporter Sarah Buttison there, uh, but I was able to be in the media room and outside here monitoring the live video streaming. And then, of course, we had additional reporters and producers inside. So we were able to bring to you very quickly what transpired. But uh, in, in your case, it must have been uh, probably a little frustrating to, to be locked because you, you can't leave. No, you can't leave. You can't bring in any form of communication. You have to leave your cell phones outside or turn them off. Just better to leave them outside. And you can't leave at all for any reason And it, because if you do, they're not going to let you back in. But I think what was more frustrating as reporters was we were seated at the very back of the courtroom in the fourth row behind the family. So we wanted to see the family's reaction. We wanted to see Jimmy DeMora's reaction. But we were seated directly behind. So it's very hard to see someone's face when you're looking at the back of their head. Right, right, right. But now, uh, he would come in each morning uh, downstairs. I saw him both mornings in the wheelchair. But then as he got into the courtroom, what, how did that play out? That was, he entered using a walker very slowly, definitely appeared to be struggling. And that is how he entered the courtroom. Seemed to genuinely need this walker. Yeah. Now, my view was, uh, having known him over the years, uh, he was, uh, you know, he's a full-figured guy. Uh, and he was uh, much fuller in the face. Uh, it seemed to me in March and, and in the years leading up to that verdict, uh, it appeared to me that he was somewhat thinner. Yes, he absolutely has lost some weight since this all started. And I think the face is the place where you can see it the most. He looks a little bit sunken in in his face compared to when you've seen him in the past, in the past especially now that he's clean shaven. But again, he's still a very large man. And with a big, bright, baggy orange suit, it can really be hard to tell just what size he is. Sure, sure. Now, um, he is being escorted by uh, a combination of uh, U.S. Marshals, courthouse personnel, uh, Bureau of Prison personnel. Um, do we know that he is being taken back to the federal prison at Youngstown until a uh, permanent prison is assigned? From what I understand, he's going back to Youngstown right now, but that is not where he wants to stay. The Whitakers, his attorneys, requested that he go to Butner, North Carolina, a prison there, and the judge said that she would recommend that. And the reason he wants to go to North Carolina is that they have medical facilities that he believed will help treat his medical conditions. That's very interesting. I'm not sure that's been reported yet. Thank you. That, that's very, very interesting. Because, you know, in a lot of these cases, um, they actually want to stay somewhat closer to home. You would think that he would, and he obviously, as the judge herself noted, has a very close-knit family, but they have done some, re the attorney said they have done their research and that the facility in North Carolina would be the best place for him at this time. Yeah. How about family, other family members and friends afterwards? Uh, what was that, what was that scene? I know uh, at the, uh, when the verdict came in, uh, you know, there was some hand-holding and hugging and comforting. What did you see? There was definitely some anger as well. Definitely tears, particularly Lori DeMora, Jimmy DeMora's wife, 
crying, being comforted by her son. They were very close. But the other family members seemed anger. We heard some comments afterwards that were like they got the wrong guys, they investigated the wrong people, some swear words I cannot repeat. Uh, just seemed very frustrated with the way things have turned out. Yeah. Well, that would sort of dovetail, too, in uh, the Whitakers, uh, Mr. DeMora's defense attorneys, uh, spent a large part of the morning uh, trying to make the case that Jimmy DeMora was, in, this is their quote, a minor player in all of this. Uh, they continually uh, brought to the judge's attention that, in their view, uh, Jimmy DeMora didn't orchestrate anything and that uh, others around him uh, were out for uh, really financial gain. Uh, and chief among those was uh, former uh, county auditor Frank Russo.